Hello, everyone. I'm Jacob Haller, and my pronouns are he, him. I'm the co-host of the Love You Like Crazy podcast, which is about young adult fiction and has been going on since 2015. I've been collecting resources to share with people who are thinking about starting their own podcast, and so I recently decided to try to talk to some independent podcasters I admire about their experiences and what they've learned. And today I'm talking to two of the founding members of the D20 Dames podcast, which is one of my favorites. Um, it's a family-friendly Dungeons & Dragons podcast, so welcome to Kat Kruger and Brittany Lianage. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having yeah, us. It's great. Thanks for doing it. Um, so if I just said your names, but perhaps you'd like to say something more about yourselves and about the podcast, uh, Brittany, would you like to start? Sure. Yeah. Um, I am Brittany Lianage. My pronouns are she, they. I am, uh, by day, I'm a product manager at Facebook for Facebook gaming. Um, but I, uh, have always loved podcasts. I've been listening to, uh, Max Fun podcasts since, you know, 2010 at this point. Um, and so podcasts have always been, always been a really important part of my life. And, uh, had an opportunity to do uh, D20 Dames uh, and kind of jumped on it. And so now for the past few years, D20 Dames has been a huge part of my life too. So it's uh, it's kind of all of our our kind of part-time jobs at this point. Uh, <laughs> I, sh I say kind of, but it's actually quite a, quite literally real, a part-time yeah. job. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, Kat, do you want to go ahead too? Sure. Um, my name is Kat Kruger. My pronouns are she, her, uh, and I'm the dungeon master at D20 Dames. I'm also a freelance writer uh, at a studio that I own called Steampunk Unicorn Studio, and um, I write for freelance um, entertainment and media clients and podcasts. I I think in recent years, they've become more important to me, specifically. Uh, because um, I'm in the realm now, but before, um, you know, I was really into Welcome to Night Vale, and I think the genesis of this idea came after um, the Adventure Zone, um, and seeing a bunch of, I think it's like, it's mostly like, there were a lot of male-focused, um, cis-white male-focused um, podcasts, and I think Jen Vaughn and I saw a space there for for us. <laughs> so uh, it was you and Jen who first had the idea of making a Dungeons and Dragons podcast? Yeah, Jen and I met um, online through Twitter through a mutual friend and we immediately, uh, oh, I love your mug. <laughs> it was a birthday present for my sister. It's amazing. Uh, we, we immediately connected, started co-working like right after meeting in person at, um, at a coffee shop. And then we started having a, a regular D&D &D game with some friends. And I think it was about six months into that game where we both had the idea sort of separately and came together. Uh, and Jen uh, originally wanted to do um, a stream. And I pushed back on that because I felt that it would be um, easier and more comfortable to be able to do it at home in our pajamas. <laughs> I, I just felt like we would be able to maintain a schedule. Uh, it's just really difficult getting so many busy people together um, weekly or even bi-weekly. Um, and so we decided that we would do a podcast. It would be... Um, Originally, it was just women, but it turned out that the people that we chose were women of color, like including myself, and um, and it just kind of blossomed from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brittany, when did you sort of come into it? Uh, so yeah, I towards the beginning, I guess I know Jen through a comic book shop. <laughs> Strangely <laughs> enough, uh, my uh, Jen is an amazing uh, illustrator, cartoonist, writer. 
Um, and my partner works at a comic shop uh, here north of Seattle. And yeah, so I just kind of knew Jen around. And then so she kind of knew me around. And then when this idea came up, I assumed there was some kind of short list of people <laughs> like, oh, let's just ask these people. Uh, and I think I was on that list or else I'm remembering it wrong. And I like squirreled my way onto the list. <laughs> it's one of the two. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, um, you were definitely like, there were just a few people and you were at the top of the list. So <laughs> very good. Very good. Good to, good to hear. Um, yeah. And I just remember very vividly the um, initial kickoff meeting we had. We went to a restaurant in Georgetown, I think. And like, I mean, we had hey, an tapas. amazing meal. Yeah, it was a really good food. It was good food. <laughs> but we just were like, so initially, right off at the onset, we were just so business minded about the whole thing. Like everyone yeah. kind of came to the table and said like, are we in? Are we in? Like everyone wants to do something cool. What do we want to do? It was like very collaborative. And I think our first, like where we landed wasn't, you know, there was so many other ideas Um like, I don't think that we landed on family friendly initially. I don't think that no. was that that was because we were, had this whole thing about um, almost like a Rat Queens-esque mm -hmm. thing, right? Remember that? Like, oh, it's yeah. so funny how, <laughs> how, how far we got from that. Um, but yeah, we kind of all put like what was important to us on the table and our, our like values and what we wanted to do with this whole thing. And, and the family friendly thing came out of uh, us kind of being passionate about that in the end and like looking at the space and being like, this doesn't exist. Like... It's it's really hard to find when we talk about our favorite podcasts and our favorite D and D podcasts and tabletop podcasts. Like it just was not a thing that was coming up. So we had pretty serious conversations from the from the onset of like, are we going to swear? Are we going to do this? Are we going to do that? And it was just like, we kind of went into it as a business from the from the start, which yeah maybe isn't a lot how a lot of uh, these like actual play podcasts start necessarily, um, but that's how it started with us. Yeah. You said that you went into this as a, you know, kind of as a business. Did you have particular goals in mind from the beginning in that area or? Yeah, that's a great question. I think like our initial mission, which Kat kind of already mentioned um, when it was like just an idea with Kat and Jen is like we didn't see ourselves in the podcast that we were listening or the D&D &D shows we were listening. So the first mission is just like show people that you can do D and D with all females and mainly women of color. Right. Like that was at the time, even that was a little, like we, we did a lot of research on podcasts and we were kind of mm -hmm. looking at them, looking at the makeup of them. And it was like, it was really few and far between. So that was the, the mission was like, let's get in there. Let's get our foot in the door. And then everything else should just fall into place from there. Once we have, once we're on those lists, right? Once we're on those lists of D&D podcasts. Um, and then it just, you know, opened up the door to lots of other things. But I think our first, the first mission, the first goal was just like, let's do it. <laughs> like, I think the first goal is like, can we put a podcast out? <laughs> yeah. Because it was so easy to just like have this dinner and be like, this is going to be so fun. And then, you know, you start talking logistics and technical specs and like, you know, it starts to get complicated. And there's probably a point in my mind where I was like, are we going to even publish a podcast? Like, sure, we're going to record a few sessions and we're going to play and it's going to be fun and I'm going to make some friends. But like, are we going to like put up a feed and like make a website and manage a social media presence? Like, are we going to get that far? I don't know. Like, it was like a little bit up in the air. But then it went so fast when we started. <laughs> yes. It went from like conversation to um, a lot of back and forth. And then all of a sudden it was like, boom, we're at pod camp. We have a presence. We have like, or pod con. We have a presence. We have oh, like, yeah. we're doing, uh, we're doing uh, workshops and networking and that weekend we're launching the, the the feed and then from there it was just like amazing um yeah. and then a few months later I published my first adventure on DMs Guild for for D20 Dames and that also opened another channel to what our our goals were and it was like establishing women and women of color on the D&D &D scene in a professional way yeah the timing of our first episode was really not lucky, I guess. I think we just kind of, we were like, you know, it's a really good deadline. <laughs> yeah. Pod con. <laughs> so I was doing a, uh, I was arranging a diversity panel for PodCon, the first PodCon in Seattle. And we, uh, 
and Jen actually helped me curate an amazing group of people to be on that panel. And so we were like, hey, we're doing this thing. We're going to be in a space with a ton of podcasters and a ton of fans of podcasts. What better time to announce that we have a podcast of our own than at this thing? And so that meant that we had to put some recording dates on the schedule and figure out who's going to edit. And like all those things just had to happen. Like there was a date on the calendar and it was not going to move. No one was going to move out PodCon. Like it was happening. Yeah. And so we either get that opportunity or we lose it. And so we just did it. And uh, it was fantastic. Fantastic. And I will also shout out the amazing kismet that happened at PodCon as well. Yes. Um, which is uh, we met uh, Jessica Ross, who at the time was just a person who sat down next to us at like an event. <laughs> and we were just chatting and we were talking, you know, she's like, oh, yeah, I have a, you know, I have this, uh, you know, podcast uh, group, uh, Bitch Team Alpha. And she's telling us about all these podcasts. And we were just kind of like, you know, hitting it off. And she's like, do you mind if I like hang out with you all? And then she hung out with us. And then we kind of went our separate ways connected on social media but when we were looking for another member of the podcast like she was on our shortlist you know our other shortlist that we had later on mm -hmm. and top then of the list. Oh, yeah, top <laughs> of the list the person that we met at podcon when we released our first ever episode it's just like you know <laughs> these things it's like we wrote them but we didn't it was just yeah just complete fate and uh and she's an absolute treasure and it's just yeah, yes it's yeah meant to be <laughs> yeah so Oh, and I want to mention also uh, that she's written some of the some things for the Dungeon Masters Guild and whatnot as well, right? Yeah, and so has Jen Vaughn. And so has Jen, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I'm going to mention now, and if I'm smart, I'll put in a little link that will flash <laughs> on the screen now that says uh, d20dames.com slash marketplace, which you can go to and check out all, you know, all of that stuff, which is great. And... Uh, you released an episode not long ago in May uh, about the Play It Forward event then. So that's over now, obviously. But all of you, each of you talk kind of about your creative pursuits and things that you can get on, on the website. So with your permission, I might even put that at the end of this episode, just as a little audio thing so people can hear about it. Because I think it's an interesting... You know, you talk about the things that you've made, but also it's a little bit of an intro to D and D. And if you're interested mm -hmm. in this, here's things you can do. So, um, anyway, not to completely break the flow of your story here. <laughs> um, so, Kat, were you like from the beginning? Did you know that you were going to be the dungeon master, or is that something you figured out? Um, I don't. I think it was very up in the air. We weren't really sure who the DM was going to be. Nobody actually had DM experience besides me, but my experience was very limited. I had um, I had learned at a convention for an hour and a half, um, and then I started DMing a home game for family. That only ran a few sessions before I I realized how much I really loved it, and um, I started. I'm I used to be a, a YA author, so I started teaching at a, a youth um, organization called McPhee Center for Creative Learning. And I was teaching D&D, uh, &D, um, creative writing through D&D. &D. Um, and I did a couple se uh, seasons there. And I think because I had that limited experience, it seemed like I had like the the little star around me as, <laughs> as, as DM, like there's a, a spotlight where it was like, oh, well, Kat has all this experience, quote unquote, experience. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I did it um, with the limited experience that I had uh, and I don't regret it at all. I love, I, I love being a DM. Uh, and Brittany, you've, you edit the podcast, right? I do. I do. And how did, how were you chosen for that? You know, that's a, that's, it was a discussion too. Um, mm -hmm. That was, that was actually a big discussion towards the beginning where I was, a, was I, I was originally going to just be a player yes, yep. and we were going to, I don't think that we had considered I, the editing part as like a big, as big of a effort as it was, or it was going to be lumped into the writing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I because I had experience uh, with editing, um, it was dated experience. Um, so I would have had to relearn everything. Um, but because I had the experience, that's 
that's sort of where I had volunteered um, a little bit because I, you know, I had more experience doing audio editing than I had as a DM at that point. <laughs> so when but, you look at the facts, you put them all on the table, seems like. <laughs> but then, it, but then, but then it, I think it quickly, uh, I quickly realized how much work being a DM was and how unrealistic it would be to DM and edit. Yeah. And then we also quickly le- realize how long it takes to edit too, right? Yeah. So like just time-wise, it wasn't going to like, nope. we had to share, <laughs> we had to spread things out. So at some point uh, before we had, you know, started recording, thankfully, um, I kind of said, I love tech stuff. I love, I love editing. I love, uh, we were talking earlier about like, I do, I, do, I will volunteer to video edits if someone asks me just because I'm like, sure, that sounds good. <laughs> um, so I, I think I was next. Well, actually, and Jen has some experience in like the kind of editing world and also the, like the radio world. Um, and so she, any of us could have said like, hey, let's let's do this thing. But I was also feeling a lot of uh, trepidation of playing. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of like, this is my opportunity to not play. <laughs> but really, it, like move the podcast forward and like make it happen. And so that's kind of the idea I threw out, which was just like, hey, I'm not sure I want to play. I want to be involved. I want to have some kind of producer role. I could take a stab at editing. Is that going to work? And then we kind of like toss that idea around and it did seem like it was going to work. And then also then, I don't know whose idea was it, but I would assume it was yours, Kat. (laughs) Just just like, also NPCs are a thing. And wouldn't it be so nice if you could could just, you know, (laughs) play anyway? (laughs) But it was like playing, but on rails, right? Like, oh, yeah. I remember like having like, Kat has this amazing like Google form where you can like create a character with her basically. And so I was like looking at that and being, or like, you know, having this idea of like, I have to build a character and then I have to think about the character and then I have to develop it and all these things, right? That, you know, play a game, right? <laughs> and that on top of editing and all of the things and like file management and all this stuff, it was just felt overwhelming. But playing an NPC where like Kat is in my ear being like, oh. <laughs> this is uh you know this thing and so the rest is <laughs> yeah or rest of here's, you, here's your one sheet ahead of the game yeah your yeah keynotes yeah. your talking notes <laughs> right right it was just like oh that that i can do <laughs> like that makes a lot of sense and also like because i can just you know take my notes and then just jump in um so that made that made sense so i don't know anyone i don't know if there's others i don't know that this exists but like you know having an, a producer editor that also can play some NPCs every now and then kind of worked out for us. Um, and fantastically, because yeah. I mean, the two NPCs <laughs> you played have been really crucial to the stories. Right. Which is only because we made it that way, right? Yeah. Like Sildar should have not been Sildar. <laughs> like Sildar should have been in the first couple of episodes pointing, you know, go that way. And then like never heard from again. <laughs> But then he became still dad, and it was just yeah, amazing. it's like tugging at everyone's heartstrings. Like, okay, that's fine, that's great. <laughs> so I got a little bit of playing. Like, obviously, I developed some NPCs beyond where we wanted them to need or needed them to be, um, <laughs> but not nothing as 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 rich as like you know the Lariah backstory or like the Riot backstory and all of that. So it's kind of a a good balance in the, the best of both worlds. So yeah. Yeah. It's so funny thinking back to like how we made these decisions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they seem so calculated. And then I'm like, I don't know if they were. I think we just were like, let's try it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and actually another decision, now that I'm thinking about it um, for you, Kat, uh, thinking about, I mean, now you write everything, like everything that we do is original content from you, but like having the brilliant idea again I don't know whose idea this was but having the brilliant idea to do like a couple of test recordings with some uh like pre-made adventures um and kind of expanding on them just so that the effort of you having to create a new (laughs) storyline right off the bat we don't know what we're doing also if we record these episodes they could be garbage and they could be lost to time forever and then we have original content in the track, right? Like, it's just like, why are we going to take that chance on something like precious? So let's take that chance on something that's like kind of, you know, a fixed adventure and then we'll grow from there. I thought that was, yeah. 
pretty pretty smart. Again, I don't know whose idea it was. I'm not claiming it was mine because it definitely was not, but it was a, it was a great idea. I, I'm fairly certain it was mine out of desperation because I was writing and then I was just like, this is, no, I'm just learning how to be a DM right now and I have to write. The, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> And then also like learning how to make, like, I remember we all like, we're taking pictures of our podcast setups, like being like, is this right? Like, does my desk look, is this where the microphone's supposed to be? <laughs> um, and then we had uh, one, one episode, uh, Jen and Essie uh, lived nearby each other and they did an episode in the same room one time. Just oh like, gosh, they were just like, yeah. let's try this. And we were like, oh, Okay. <laughs> Sure, I tried that. And it was just like, nope, we're never doing that. Never again. <laughs> it's like, good experiment, never doing that again. <laughs> just like things like that. Like every every new decision was like, okay, hold on. Like, are, do we have our guardrails up? Do we have, are we, are we sure? Um, I don't know that we have that much anymore. Like, I feel like now we have a rhythm. We don't have anything other than having a lot more guests on. Yeah. Which is always a wild card. So did you record anything that you didn't release or did you end up using everything? We ended up releasing those first episodes, that first series. Yeah. And then we went into original content. And then I think around in between season one or season two, season one, season two, we decided for people to dive in, we wanted them to like dive into the original content. And so we turned those first three episodes from what was the what's the adventure module that uh, in Volo's Wake in Volo's Wake yeah we turned those into like prequel episodes so like season zero episodes so that when you're looking at our feed like you could wa- you could listen to those and they make sense but like you're not you could just jump in to right there and trust our uh, trust our manner yeah um so we did I don't think that we've ever recorded a full episode and not released it no, I think that first recording, though, uh, there was a lot that got cut because I think there was Sildar appeared and at, and it was really good that we cut it because I was playing Sildar at the time. That's right. And Sildar That's was right. very, very different. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you can listen to those episodes and you can hear they're like they're they're distinctly rougher. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I'll, a lot of season one is, is, is like that. But uh, those first episodes are really kind of. Crunchy. Yeah. And another thing we were still trying to figure out is like, what do we keep in? What do we what do we keep out? Because mm-hmm. another thing we wanted to do is like, if this is going to be a family friendly podcast, we don't want people to have to know about D&D. We don't want to have to say like, you know, Kat says, oh, can you make an investigation check? And then we roll it and then we move on. And like, no one talks about what an investigation role is and like what, you know, your character sheet is like that felt not in the spirit of what we were trying to do. So having having the room to at least uh, talk about some of those things and like give, uh, give the audience if they needed it some more context was also something we were kind of fumbling through at the beginning. Um, yeah. Especially because think- we weren't, we weren't used to playing with each other. Oh, that's the other part. We had yeah. never played with each we, other before. Except Jen oh and I. Yeah. 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 Except it's, which is crazy. Right. So it's like so many uh, growing pains and, and, and like, you know, half on half off training wheels. And then I went to edit it and I was just like, I kept asking, I was like, should I leave this in? Should I leave this roll in? Should I, should we leave in the space of, you know, Maris looking for her dice, right? Like, should, what should I keep in? What should I take out? I don't know. Like, what's people's opinions on this? And now I feel like I edit with my ears and eyes closed at this point. Like, it's just like, like, it's just, I, I know what, it sh- I know what the episode should sound like. I know what they should feel like. But at the beginning, I, I knew nothing, especially because like, you know, I looked up to Adventure Zone and Griffin McElroy is just an in crazy, like, in, in, I just tried to combine crazy and incredible into increasable. <laughs> and I stick with, I stick to that because it is increasable. Like the editing and the storytelling and it's just so rich. And it's like, when you start from zero, you want to be there, right? Mm-hmm. You want to have that. And we talked about having uh, background music. We talked about having sound effects. But man, if you're still trying to figure out if you should keep in roles or not, <laughs> you know, or <laughs> it's like, hold on, I, I don't want to put that stuff in when I'm still just trying to figure out the basics. But I wanted to get to that level. I wanted to get to that beautiful, you know, um, 
soundscape and you know music that comes in and you're like oh that reminds me of this thing and every time this character is brought up this so- this sound plays right like man i wanted to get there and i feel like we actually for a few a few of our more recent episodes we have gotten to that point yeah. where we what we wanted what we what i as the editor what i envisioned at the beginning and wanting every episode to be i feel like we finally hit that point where we have space to do that. Mm-hmm. And we can say like, do we want, you know, do we want to write an original track for this? Like, you know, lullaby? Mm, yeah. yeah. I think I have a couple hours yeah. to do that. <laughs> like we do want to do that. And like, cool, let's do it. And let's throw it in. Or like we use tabletop audio for, for soundscape type stuff. And, you know, at first we, I remember you all kept asking for it. Like, it would be really cool if we had tavern noises here and this. And I'm like, I know, I hear you. I hear you all. And I want that too. But it's so hard because I can't just do it in episode four and then not do it in episode five because I don't have time. Right. So it was just this whole, like, you know, I had this, like, I felt bad because I knew, I knew why we wanted it and I knew it would be impactful and it would make the episodes feel really special, but I couldn't commit to it. Um, but now I'm committing to it more. And so most of the time you'll hear that, that stuff in the background. Um, and it's what makes it kind of what pulls the episodes together anyways, but I have time to do it because editing, editing an episode takes me a quarter of the time it used to take me. Um, and that just comes with practice and, uh, you know, knowing everyone's little quirks and you know, <laughs> things that like, you know, I can look at an audio wave and be like, oh, there's, you know, there's Grace and, um. <laughs> Grace and, Grace and Cries up there. Okay, uh-huh. cool. Airplane noise. Airplane uh, noise, yes. <laughs> we used to have a lot of airplane noises. Not as much anymore, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you, just to talk about your tech setup a little bit, like, do you, how is, well, let's see, there's a few things. There's like the microphones and mixer and stuff. Then there's the software. Um, how is that? Has that changed since you started the podcast? Or a couple things have changed. A couple things have not. So again, when we had that first meeting with like that that like businessy meeting, one of the things is like we should invest in good quality equipment because mm-hmm. we can't fake that. And we did a ton of research. I think we still have this spreadsheet that has like all the different, you know, pros and cons. And we ended up all getting the blue Yeti microphones um, because it had everything we needed, kind of all packaged. Mm-hmm. One was an investment, but not something that we were like, ha- people had to take out a you know loan for, open up a new credit card for, right? Like it wasn't like we weren't asking so much, but if you wanted to be part of this thing, it, it was an appropriate amount. Mm-hmm. Um and then everyone's setup is a little different um, physically. And I think that's changed and evolved over time. One, because we've changed houses, apartments, and moved and things like that. Uh, Jen records in a closet, <clears throat> which is great. Like, that's her thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, with, like, all of her clothing, clothing is, you know, <laughs> sound absorption. And um, I'm pretty – Jess is just at a desk. I'm just at a desk. But – uh, we have like the, you know, boom mic arm standy thing. Some of us can, yeah. you have a very elaborate setup that can be yeah. taken down. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Cause my, my setup, my office is uh, shared with Grayson's nursery space. So um, yeah, <laughs> I, I have a, a standing desk um, because I prefer standing when I'm DMing. And I recently, up until recently, I had like, you know, those school presentation trifolds. Um, oh, yeah. So it was that, but I put, I stuck a uh, sound foam all on it and surrounded my desk with it because I live next to an airport now and it's really loud here. Um, so when I first moved here, Brittany um, had to try and edit out jet engine noises. So many airplanes, <laughs> so many airplanes. And it was yeah. always like... There weren't as many airplanes when Kat wasn't saying something really important mm-hmm. in DME. And then, of course, as soon as she started, it was like, and here they go. Yeah. It's just like every time, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that, all that of board... that work really does matter. Like it did. Oh, it, it's so it's so much better. It's so yeah. much better. Yeah. But uh, uh, that foam board uh, fell apart because it was a cheap, mm. you know, the cheapest option that, you know, provided sound quality. But now I've got um, it's like this. Um, uh, back, 
I think they use it for like blue screen backgrounds. So I've got that spread across as like a room divider with a with a soundproof or sound dampening um, a curtain. And I'm hoping that it's the same quality, if not better. <laughs> I don't know if you've edited those episodes yet, Brittany. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. <laughs> it's pretty, it's crazy what you can hear, like the, the little, like, little tiny things you can hear Jen this is like a stupid anecdote but like Jen had this her closet was next to this the bathroom and the bathroom's like fan Fan. would occasionally kick on and you could hear it so just because it's just this hum (laughs) and I would hear you know sometimes we'd catch it sometimes we didn't and I would hear it in the track and be like ah that fan like and she'd be like hold (laughs) on I have to go shut off the fan and it's just like these things that come through and you know I feel like we all are a little on the perfectionist side of mm-hmm. things or yeah. maybe a lot on the perfectionist <laughs> yeah. side of things. So like, you know, we could have said at the beginning, like, uh, yeah, it's fine. Like, we're going to leave it in and it's going to be rough and people are going to listen because we're, you know, we're, we're telling a fun story and all of this stuff. But like, we really just wanted to, we just wanted it to be really good. And I listened to some of these old episodes and I'm like, oh, I want to re-edit this. I get why like directors like remaster and re-edit mm-hmm. their films. <laughs> it's like, you listen to it a year later. They remaster the distant. Yeah, because like I listen back and I'm like, oh, why would I ever have done that? Or like, oh, I can't, I can barely hear this person and like all of that stuff. Um, that's the one thing that has changed. Actually, the biggest thing that has changed is um, the first few episodes, the first season, basically, I edited all in GarageBand because I knew how to edit in GarageBand uh, music. <laughs> and so I was just like, I see I they had a podcast template. So I was like, people must edit podcasts in GarageBand. Like, that seems fine. And it was it was actually pretty OK, but it just was slow and my computer was just like oh this application doesn't want to work very quickly and everything takes so long to save and sometimes it's going to crash and it's just like, it was just got really bad um and so I switched to audition end of season like, towards the end of season one maybe I made the, the switch over um and I've been with audition the now I just I love it and I it's I am editing faster than ever like you know the learning curve is a little bit like I was editing slower for a little bit and then like it was like rapidly editing a lot faster um so that's the biggest change so if I did if I were to go back and remaster any of those episodes I they'd all be in garage band and I'd have to be like oh my gosh how do I even do this anymore (laughs) um so yeah so that's that I think that's the biggest biggest change I think we've all been using audacity to record our own tracks no we haven't oh garage band yeah, because I'm on a Mac, That's and right. yeah, for yeah. whatever reason, Audacity or Audition uh, doesn't work very well, at least on mine. Uh, so I've been with GarageBand the whole time. The whole I think time. I tried. Yeah. I think I tried early on to use um, what's the free one? Is it Audition or Audacity? Audacity. Audacity. Yeah. yeah. So I was using that for a little bit, but I think there was something with my gain that wasn't working out and there are a lot of like hidden settings. And to be fair, GarageBand has a lot of hidden settings too, but they look they look nicer so like you can find when something's off (laughs) and on audacity like everything just looks so windowsy and like yeah windows 95 e and so it's just it's just not as friendly and i it's what we suggest that our guests use and stuff too but like i get when people are like wait this is what you want me to record i'm like yeah just trust me like check these four things and then just click record it'll be great like just don't don't worry about it yeah yeah kind of one of my enduring uh memories of the early days of listening to podcasts is like so many podcasts i listened to at some point would have a thing where they would say well we lost an episode because audacity ate it or you know we're re-recording this so because audacity crashed and took everything with it and uh so i've i i haven't heard that in probably five to ten years but um Nonetheless, I I have a certain suspicion of it. (laughs) An unreasoning prejudice. Um, (laughs) Well, we do have a backup, too. Actually, Audacity does sometimes eat files. It actually just recently happened to us um, where it wasn't wasn't exporting the full file. Uh, Jen was having a bunch of issues with that. And so, yeah, when we record, we have... Well, it's not the best backup. Yeah, Kat, you can yeah, so <laughs> talk we, about our friend. <laughs> we record in Discord, um, and there's a, what is it? A plugin called Craig. It's like Craig. a plugin. Uh, so Craig, our buddy Craig, um, 
joins the call with his little robotic I have joined the call or something something creepy like that. Now, he says now recording. Now recording, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he records or it records. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, we have a backup on Discord um in the event that something terrible happens. Um and like Brittany said, we did have to make use of it in our most recent recording. Mm. So I, I mentioned that I was going to be talking to you to a few people who are familiar with D20 Dames. And one of the things that everyone always kind of brings up, I mean, everyone meaning like the two or three people I mentioned it to, <laughs> um, is sort of your the D20 Dames community and how you have built that. Uh, so I don't know. Is there anything that you would want to say about that? I think um, I think because early on we decided we were going to be family friendly. I think building that community and has resulted in a very positive and warm community. Um, I don't think we've ever dealt with any real negative negativity. Um, it's been really pleasant, which I don't know can be said for a lot of podcasts. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think the combination of the listeners, which again, you know, the family friendly aspect does help us, right? Like it's just, there's a, there's just a little bit more positivity injected into the things we're doing. Also people always talk about how the fact, the fact that they, you know, if you read through our reviews, people are like, it's so refreshing how they don't just like pull their swords out and start yeah. decapitating guys. It's like it's, terrible that that's refreshing <laughs> you know like it's terrible <laughs> that that's like the exception but yeah that is it that like from the beginning from the very 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 beginning ask you know talking using your words even before we were like are we a family-friendly podcast it's just like the nature of everyone that was playing was mm -hmm. very much about like hold on hold on you know like let's talk to this person let's 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 hear him out like you know Maris just, is like one of the better best examples, not better examples, but just the, one of the best examples of it where she's just like wants to know everyone's story and like she's going to buy fabric at the store and she wants to talk to that guy, which it, to cats, you know, <laughs> cats probably like, oh, please don't talk to this NPC. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like in everyone's nature. And so I think that comes out in the podcast and then people hearing it, you know, feel like they want to be a part of that. And then the other side of it is that the D and D tabletop community exploded at the same time, around the same time that we were, you know, starting our thing. And so there's this like camaraderie that was happening as well. Mm -hmm. You know, a bunch of other, you know, female uh, produced and like female uh, podcasts were coming on board. Um, a lot of great podcasts with people of color and just like, we're kind of in the same like graduating class or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. the same cohort, cohort. you know? <laughs> so, yeah. And so, you know, we start making those connections as well. And so that helps to bolster the community community too. Um, you know, I know a lot of like some of our more uh, like more hardcore fans are, you know, huge fans of D20 Tames, but they're also huge fans of adventure they wrote, um, which, you know, and, and it's just this, you know, we're kind of, everyone can come into the pot, right? Like everyone can come in and like, we're happy to tell you about, uh, you know, venture maidens. And we're happy to tell you about plot hunters. Cause these are people we know, we see them at conventions, we see them at D and D live and like they're friends of ours. And like, we should be sharing that community. So I think that those two sides of it were like the D and D community and the D and D uh, creator community is really just, uh, when you can, when you look for it and when you find it, it's really positive and really great, right? Like there's other corners that are just, you know, not that way. Um, but we're in that corner that is just really positive. And then we get to transfer that to our listeners and our listeners get to take advantage of that. And it's just, it goes back and forth. So yeah, it's, I think it's just a combination of all those things. I feel like you, you sort of think about the audience in a way, well, I don't know. I mean, I guess most podcasters probably think about their audience in some way, but I, it's just sort of emblem. The way that you approach it is just kind of like you do a bunch of live shows and I feel like you really think about how the audience is going to kind of experience it and fit into it. Um, and that's, you know, 
it's something I noticed, I'm sure, and I'm sure that many people have. And yeah, then, the live shows are super fun. And yeah, early on um, writing them, I, I knew that I wanted audience participation because what's the point of having a live show if you don't have that, to me anyway? Um, so, you know, whether it's, you know, rolling a plush D20 or doing Mad Libs or actually getting audience members to role play NPCs, um, I think that's the benefit of doing a live show is is having that back and forth. And how do you how do you approach recording those? <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> um, almost all of our live shows happen at conventions, so that's good uh, because they are miked. Uh, there is a soundboard. Boom. Uh, we I'll bring a Zoom recorder. I will plug it into the output, I will basically just record the soundboard. Unfortunately, the output of that is a single track. Um, so if, you know, Jen was sitting and facing away from her mic too much, I can't do much about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if, you know, I'm, I was there eating the mic, I can't, you know, there's only so much you can do. Um, it ends up working out okay. Uh, and then you have, you know, you have the fun stuff like at uh, Gen, Gen Con, the the next door was just... Oh. <laughs> they were having some sort of party like or something. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was like one of those like sing-along, like you set up to sing-along with a something. I don't know. It was like, you know, very loud. And like, I can't do much about that in the edit. I can do as much as I can, but you're going to hear it. So you know, almost all of our live shows have a caveat at the beginning, which is like, hey, don't forget, this is a live show. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about it. <laughs> um, because yeah, it, it, it is what it is. Um, the only exception to that, uh, the only the only time we've ever had to uh, create a stage from, oh no, this is a lie. Um, two times we had to create um, recording where there wasn't recording. The first was at Creme work, but um, with the Queens of Adventure, but they are fantastic producers. Uh, Matt Baum um, and Matt Baum's partner is like, they're like, they they did it all. We just like yeah. sat down and they had everything set up and they gave us a zip drive at the end. They're like, cool, good. You have an episode now. <laughs> so, but they did a lot of work to create a, you know, a podcast live show where it was a, basically a, a, a nightclub. Um, and then the Renton History Museum mm -hmm. was another time when we were recording in a museum <laughs> they did not have a soundboard they had they were like we've got a table we've got chairs is that enough and I'm like yes that's enough let's do it <laughs> um we got some help from our friend uh jason megatron burrows who uh helped set up a little mini soundboard and we recorded that way and we actually got individual tracks that time so that was great but those are the exceptions most of the time if you're going to record a live show at a con take advantage of the soundboard because they're already their mics are there. This audio, depending on which con you're at, the audio people are very nice. They're very accommodating. Um, they will, you know, what they usually do is like they're there for the first five minutes of the live show. They'll adjust the levels and then they peace out, yep. which is all you need. You know, it just that's all you need. Typically, if I'm not in the live show, I'll stand around the soundboard and maybe adjust some things, but not usually. Um, and then, yeah, I don't think we've ever had had too many you know, knock on wood, but we haven't had too many snafus mm -hmm. um, in that. Oh, something maybe I should have brought up much earlier. So <laughs> you talked a little bit about where you get incidental music and sound effects and things like that. Uh, when you were starting out, how did you, like, in terms of the theme song and the icon, things like that, um, mm. how did you get those? We're very lucky that one of our cast members is uh, a professional artist. <laughs> so <laughs> Jen Vaughn uh, uh, does like all of our artwork. So she did the logo. Um, she does our t-shirt artwork, poster artwork, um, pretty much anything that we need for promotional purposes um, or, you know, the, the covers for the DM Skilled uh, Adventures. Um, it's all Jen Vaughn's art. And we established pretty early on that we wanted to have um, one artist on it and it would be Jen um, because we wanted it to have that same look. 
yeah, she has a very distinct style and then it makes just our podcast have a very distinct style. So on our t-shirts and our logo, everything, um, it's always Jen, but it's also, she has this you know, color scheme and just things that she does to make it, uh, AMC. Yeah. And then for music, we, we hired, um, middle essence to create the theme song for D20 Dames. Um, because again, as Brittany's been saying, you know, we want it to come, we wanted to come to this uh, as professionals and what better way than to hire a professional, um, to do the music for us. Um, rather than you know license out um, something, I think I think as much as we we planned it as a business, I think we we still didn't realize how much work was going to go into it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, especially because it's all original content, and you know we have a producer and sound, and even you know the cast members have to do a lot of prep work for each episode because we, I guess this doesn't work for all podcasts, but for an actual play podcast, um, that is a collaborative story. Um, you know, they, I need to give them notes ahead of time, um, for them to think about what their, what their next actions are, or I need information for what do you want to do in downtime or, um, you know, after this series of events, how is your character feeling? Um, what are what are their goals at this point? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of um, there's just a lot of work that I don't think we we would have expected um, when we first had our initial conversation. Same, I think on the on the and the production side of it too. Like when you say actual play you know, part of you and, and some podcasts are like this and, and especially the ones that <laughs> where it's like, Hey, we all play D and D already. Let's just record this stuff, put it on the internet. Cool. That's a total, like we say this all the time in like, um, uh, interviews when people ask us in like Q and A is like, that is valid. That makes, that can make sense absolutely for you. 100%. If you want to throw some microphones on your table and record, or if you're already doing it remotely and you want to record and you just want to put that out there for, you know, anyone or friends and family, or even just as a log of your adventure, like that sounds cool. That sounds awesome. That isn't exactly what we wanted to go in doing. Mm -hmm. Um, we wanted to make sure we were, you know, it was like a really, you know, these were tight episodes and everything was like polished. And I think one of the things that I, I, I didn't realize was I, I knew we, we were going to have to edit it, but I didn't, I, it's, there's a lot of production value that happens while we're recording, right? Like things have to happen in a certain way. And it, it's, it's, mo- it's, 98% cat just making sure things happen um, as the DM. But if we had just turned the mics on and we did a two hour recording session and then I just took that wholesale and just threw it on the internet, we would just be a very different podcast. And when people hear actual play, I think that that's what they think it is, is just, oh, so you play D&D with some friends and then you just put that on the internet. Um, and we really wanted to make not a pe- uh, we didn't want to make a podcast of people playing a game. We wanted to make a podcast of people telling a story yeah. and being characters going through a story together. We happen to play D&D to do that. But it's not the point. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> D&D is the mechanism which helps us, you know, do skill checks and see if something's going to work out and this does fate work in your favor, but we're telling a story. It's really a collaborative storytelling podcast. That's, and we say this, it's, we're a storytelling podcast powered by D and D. Um, and maybe in the future we'll be powered by some other mechanism or, yeah. you know, it's at the heart of it is a storytelling podcast. And we knew, I think we knew that initially, but like, it's not what you think it's going to be as you're saying, I'm going to make a D and D podcast. Um, so that definitely evolved. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like thinking about the Adventure Zone in particular, like that is edited so tightly, um, even the early episodes, which, you know, the Adventure Zone, you were talking about how you wanted to hear, sound like the Adventure, you know, like the audio production, the Adventure Zone from the get go, but like the Adventure Zone didn't have that for a while. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. Uh, yeah. So um I I 
personally am a fan of the edited podcast myself um, in general. Uh, so one of my editing questions is just like, how long does it take you to, you know, if you start with an hour of raw audio, how long does it take to edit and how much of that ed- is there at the end? Yeah, that's uh, a great question. Again, I embarrassingly, a, an hour's worth of raw audio with five tracks would take me at the very beginning, eight to 10 hours. It took me a long time. Um, and I think, yeah, I don't think I hid that it took me a long time. It was just, I was burnt out after every episode. I was just like, I said, my whole day is gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, you know, I can, it's like an hour to, an, an hour of raw would be like about two hours of editing, maybe, maybe to three hours if I'm getting really nitty gritty, um, which I think is pretty good time. Yeah. Um, I think it helps too that in over the course of the few seasons that we've had, like we are running a tighter story as we're recording. The first season was rough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so because true. We, and, we just didn't I know can... the timing of like, is this a full episode? Like, where are we supposed to break? Where's the cliffhanger? Um, and now I think, um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting better at that. Like, I know, like, if we're having a two and a half hour recording, this is where the first episode ends. This is where the next episode ends, you know? I started uh, re-listening to D20 Dames from the start not too long ago. And in the very first episode, which was, you know, from that kind of prequel yeah. part that you mentioned earlier um there's a point where you're just like so then there was a really long fight here but it's not that fun to listen to <laughs> so <laughs> it was so long right here. and it was so was long and just so one just, like, missing hits missing hits it was just like you know no wonder why we don't fight very much in our podcast because we just weren't good at it from the beginning and it was just made like a very boring everyone was frustrated oh my gosh i was like, like trust starting us, at level one. Oh my word i was so yeah. glad to level everybody up after <laughs> yeah starting at level one brand new characters none of us had played with each other before you know it was like the perfect storm of just like people hmm. fumbling through you know i I just I, I get excited to play with the group now because it's like I know like if we encounter a certain scenario, you know, Mariah has these certain things and then Riot has these certain things and then Raya will surprise me with this. And it's just like it took time to get there. And it's it's a, a little bit of the frustrating part. I'm completely on a tangent now, but that's a little bit of the frustrating part with a um a, a storyline podcast, you know, because I want everyone to be with us in season three. I want a new person to just be able to jump on in season three, but it's not, you're not going to feel it unless you go back to at least season two. Right. But then I'm like, Hey, would you want to watch hours of listen to our hours of content before you can know what we're talking about today? Like just, I hate that, you know, and I, we constantly are talking about ways to make that easier jumping in points. We have like recap. Jen has edited an amazing recap of season two. And we want to have that for, for more sections of the podcast, but it's, yeah, it's just those little things. Like if you don't listen to the really early episodes, you don't know what the significance of bud, the tree and sapling is. And then, you know, how much of an impact he actually has in the, in the, in the story and, and with Rose in particular. Um, yeah. But that's a big commitment just for Bud. <laughs> <laughs> just for Bud. It's so true. Well, now we have the same thing kind of happening with Rose where we, we mention I mean, spoilers, but like we mentioned Rose who, you know, something happens where she's not in this episodes anymore. And sure you can jump in right at that as that had happened but it's a very big part of the storyline and like we don't plan on ignoring it and pretending it didn't happen like it's going to continue to be a big part yeah. of the storyline and so what seems like an an npc or something that doesn't matter it's like no no that was a player like a player and a very big part and it still is and it's just like how do you explain that to someone who's just like oh you have a podcast cool i want to check it out where should i start i'm like oh the beginning, the beginning. Like 50 episodes ago <laughs> okay. is that okay <laughs> like where, where i am in my re-listen is um let's see where am i actually uh yeah season two episode eight out of the woods 
Um, <laughs> so there's a point um, after kind of the break where there, you know, uh, a new character, Karen, played by Brittany, um, and Lariah, um, played by uh, Jessica Ross, um, who two characters who had recently joined the party have a discussion where they're like, "What? Why does the care? Why does the party care about this bud?" Like, what is going on with this? It's a tree. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wait, we're doing, we're putting our lives at risk for a tree. Am I here? Like, what? <laughs> I must have misunderstood. It's exactly, that is the exact, that is like, yeah, we were the voice of the, the new, the new audience yeah. who might just have come in thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I'm kind of out of questions, but are there other things that like, well, so someone's listening to this, uh, they're either new to podcasting or are thinking about starting their own podcast, not necessarily D20, uh, D&D one, but just a podcast in general. Like, is there anything that we should talk about for that person that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, I think, I mean, we said this, but there is a time commitment to make something of quality. And it's a, it's a trade off, right? Um, and so setting expectations, we see this all the time, but it's setting expectations. If it's just you and you're the only one making that podcast, set the expectations for yourself. Mm-hmm. That is important. Don't go into it thinking like, I'll figure it out. It's just me. I'm not you know hurting anyone. No, just set those expectations for yourself. If you are doing something with one or more people as we are, are doing, set that expectation across the table make sure everyone's in it. If everyone is not in it for the right things, not right things, but the, the same, the same outcome. Yeah. That is, that is fine. Except you should talk about that. Yeah. So if someone's just there like, Hey guys, I can only commit to coming in for a recording and then piecing out. I can't help with feedback. I can't help with editing. I can't help with this, that, that if everyone says, cool, I think that's actually okay for us right now. That's great. But when that stuff comes out, halfway and like no pun intended not (laughs) halfway uh (laughs) when it comes out in bits and pieces and everyone's kind of on different pages like that is where you get into trouble and so it's something that we identified really early on of just making sure roles were really clear um especially when there are roles in the in the list that are are heavier than others cat has to write content she has to organize characters and lots of things in her brain. She has to do accents and you know, she's doing a lot of work and it's not the same work as editing. Maybe time-wise we spend a similar amount of time, but it's different types of work. It yeah. requires different skill sets, different brain time, different carve outs of your you know day. Um, so we actually have a, we have a, a doc that has like all of our, that we've recently revisited, but it has like all the stuff we do for the podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that you might do with your manager at your job of like, here's all the stuff I do every day. Is this okay? Am I doing the right stuff? Is this, should I not be doing this? Is this not important to someone? Is, do, is, is posting on Facebook not actually as, as beneficial to us as posting on Twitter? Like these are good conversations to have. Um, and I wouldn't let them get swept under the rug. So, um, you know, having business meetings, even if you're not thinking it's a business, like having a podcast meeting, having yeah. a business meeting where you're like talking about these things and not only leaving them for the five minutes before you record and the five minutes after you record, you know, it's all, um, it's all really important. And again, if you're just doing it yourself, if you're just someone who's interviewing a bunch of people, do that for yourself, make that list for yourself and understand, um, what you're really getting yourself into because then you can say i agreed to do this so the hard days you can be like it's okay that it's hard i put a list down it's a lot of things mm-hmm. you know and on the days when you feel really accomplished you can look at that list and be like wow i do a lot of work and you can feel really good about it but if you're not really sure why you're feeling stressed or why you're feeling you know like accomplished or whatever it's just if you're not telling yourself the right you know, the, the same story, it's going to get, it's going to get really messy. And it's even more so when you have other people involved. But yeah. I think and it's, I think it's not just the time commitment for like, um, for like one episode. It's also like figuring out what your schedule is going to be because we, de- we determined early on that we were going to do biweekly um, because we didn't think that it would be feasible for us to go weekly. And I'm very happy that we did because there have been sometimes it's been difficult just to do biweekly. Um, and, you know, for us, we also determined that we would get episodes in the can so that 
just in case something happened, uh, we would have a backup episode um, in case we couldn't meet the the second week. Um, so it's it's having realistic conversations like that, either with yourself or with your um, with your team. Yeah, I bet. Um, you know, with COVID nineteen, that's I'm sure has changed everyone's schedules a lot. Yeah, just working like you know, working styles and like cadences of people's days are a little bit different. Um, what's not different is that we always recorded remotely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, something like like the like Jen Jen Vaughn does the big dungeon show um, at her uh, very very spaceship studio, and like that is something that she had started recently. And they all go into a studio and they recorded, you know. It, a campaign it's like really fun and like that had to shift right that she yeah. said that not that it's impossible to do role playing on a zoom call it's very normal but that was not the intention of that show and then she had to kind of shift gears and figure out how to do it whereas we did not have those conversations <laughs> like that is something we completely bypassed we were just like oh we're all home now cool so when should we record everything's the same everyone set up the same no one uh, had to go out not and buy quite more equipment. though because i i actually uh i have a, an 18 month old and um no child care so i only work on the weekends now so we've had to at least shift slightly like we we the do timing, doodle, sh- the yeah, schedules shift doodle yeah. doodle yeah. polls have always been um the thing that we've used to schedule um recordings and now it's basically i can only record on the weekends because those are that's the only time I can work. But like physically, like yeah. we had all the setup, we had oh, yeah. everything we needed, nothing, we weren't, we didn't have to get used to a new setup, um, but we had to get used to the the more rigorous schedule um, for all of us. And it yeah. was kind of like, we had the puzzle pieces initially, and then all those puzzle pieces shifted and then we're like, wait, 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 which, <laughs> what's the day? What's our one day? Yeah. It's on Saturday still, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it needed its own groove. And then as things start to change again, we're probably going to, it's probably going to happen again. We're probably going to have to continue to evolve and figure out our schedule. But we try to take things in chunks of a a couple months at a time. um, And then, you know, hope that that works out. Well, very good. Um, Well, thanks so much for agreeing to do this. And uh, it's been great to talk to you both. You too. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this very special, not really an episode, episode of D20 Dames. Um, there's a really cool event going on that we wanted to tell everyone about, make sure that everyone knows um, uh, this cool thing that's happening, that you can get your own campaign involved in the D20 Dames magic, and that is uh, the DMs Guild is having a special event called Play It Forward. Um, it's a really tough time for everyone, and they are recognizing that, and all earnings from uh, DMs Guild content um, that is from the community is going straight to community creators uh, for the next couple of weeks. So from now, and when you're hearing this recording, until May 17th, 2020, um, all earnings go directly to community creators, which is huge. And we thought it would be a great time to tell you all about the uh, incredible content that um, the D20 Dames and D20 Dames uh, DM and players have uh, published on uh, the DMs Guild. The easiest place to find all of our content is at d20dames.com slash marketplace. There you'll find all the links to the specific adventures that we're going to talk about. Um, And you can also find uh, the content on dmsguild.com and you can find lots of other cool things there too um and you can search for uh kat krueger you could search for jessica ross you could search for jen vaughn you could search for all of these people's names and the content will show up it's beautiful uh it's a lovely thing (laughs) um cool so kat would you want to tell people just like what is the d20 dames connection to dms guild uh i think what i wanted to do was uh was provide content uh written by women um and show examples of of how uh, adventures are played. It just seemed to go hand in hand. So uh, I decided with my very first adventure that I would put it on DM's Guild and see how it went. And um, from there, just you know, 
we just published a, a few more adventures. Um, and then in season two, I had a baby. And so now there's a backlog of uh, adventures that are still waiting to be published. But we do have um, our content from season one up on DM Skilled. And it was just sort of an experiment to see how the community w would receive it. And um, it's been very positive. I think all of the stuff that we put on there has uh, our metal um, bestsellers. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm realizing I, I don't think there is, is there's, is there any content on DMs Guild that either Kat or Jen you've put up that we that the dames haven't played, or dames adjacent properties? Oh, oh. Um, I mean, I've written some encounters for um, Beyond the Basics mm -hmm. and um, Villains and uh, Layers Four, which is very goth um, and is very appropriate for a dames adventure at some point. Um, uh, but. No, like, Kat was in my Ravnica adventure, even. Like, not That's like, right, yeah. playing herself. <laughs> a, a, a dungeon master trying to get out of a terrible dungeon. <laughs> so better. I, I, do, I do have uh, some content that's up there from, like, Adventures League and Baldman Games and mm. uh, Wizards of the Coast. Um, and I think I've got a couple anthologies as well. Uh, one anthology that we haven't played Um but there is a possibility. Although at the same time, I ran it for Jen on the big dungeon show. Heck yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love so many other. plugs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I just wanted to know, like, is it will is is there more content that I don't even know about that I can play soon? Uh, there sounds like there's there is, so that's exciting. <laughs> um, so a question we actually get a lot is, um. Like, I am a new DM and I want to run a game for uh, my friends or I, I want to run a game for my campaign that I've been in as a player, but I'm, I want to DM it or GM it. Um, are, any adventures that you think that we have up? Um, and I say we very, let me be clear. I say we very lightly. <laughs> Mainly <laughs> Kat and Jen at this point. Um, but any adventures that we've specifically played on D20 Dames that are, are particularly good for potentially a new DM to, to try out? Um, of the ones that I've, I've written for us, uh, I think, uh, Trouble at Chessender Manor and Safety Guaranteed, mm -hmm. I, th those are both first level, uh, uh, characters. And I think those are pretty straightforward for a new DM to run, especially Safety Guaranteed because it's an escape room essentially. So there's only the one room. Um, it's an hour long, uh, takes place at a convention, which, um, is maybe kind of fun to run right now because nobody is able to go to a convention. Um, uh, Trouble at Chesnor Manor, it um, it sort of takes place adjacent to the uh, D&D starter set, The um, Lost Mine of Vandalver. Um, just sort of repurposing one of the one of the buildings in Vandalin there. Um, and I think both of those are are first time DM friendly. There's there's a lot um, of instruction and um, it's all very contained. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, Kat also wrote Child's Play for one of our live show that will be coming out soon, but not in this uh, sale. And I got to run that at Gen Con last year a couple times, and it was beautiful. And everyone falls in <laughs> love with it because your characters get transformed to younger versions of themselves. So there's so much role playing potential as well. Um, but uh, I'd also like to counter that and be like, if you think you're a hot stuff DM and you're like, Ugh, forget this new stuff, like or stuff for new players, I want to play something really difficult um, <laughs> or resolve some, uh, some problems at the table. The escape from the fortress of memories is nice that Kat wrote um, because uh -huh. it's a, it's a nightmare dream sequence. So you can do it anytime time you know like people are always rolling for um nighttime encounters and stuff and it's like what if it was actually an adventure in their dreams mm -hmm. so you can really <laughs> stretch them uh the experiments of dr skulldial i wrote for the um ravnica is um really puzzle forward too so just torture your uh your um your players with it. <laughs> That one had a really fun, like, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory sort of vibe to it, <laughs> except science. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. I got a lot of uh, influence on that, too, from uh, the um, some Hotel Cabal episode of Gargoyles, where Goliath goes into this <gasps> nice. Illuminati hotel, and, like, every room is more terrible than the last. So I was just like, <laughs> how can I do this? Like... <laughs> I was gonna ask. So I was gonna ask about like the, the the existing campaigns. I think that the the escape from the fortress of memories is like just a. I I feel like 
just being able to drop like drop into any part of any campaign and be like we're doing this now you're all yeah. sleeping in here <laughs> like remember that old storyline that you thought I forgot about well <laughs> it's back and it's in your dreams like I just love that like truly you don't have to have any planning like if you're just like really struggling for that next uh that next thing yeah um I would I would also say uh I realize we haven't talked about Jess's stuff too um she has a uh, swamp hag adventure in the Book of Seasons, Solstices. Oh, that is yeah. fantastic, and that's for um, uh, I think it's for tier, it's tier one, um, but you can always um, downgrade it too. And it's just it's very good because it's it hits all three pillars real hard. <laughs> uh, that's one that I yeah that I have read through and probably spoiled myself for, yes, but same. I have not played it unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> if you are say stuck at home with little ones or big ones. Um, and are looking for some type of art project that only requires a printer, scissors, colored pencils, but you can use words like paper prototyping to maybe uh, <laughs> impress a teacher. Uh, you should grab paper smalls that I have on there. Uh, it's it's a way to make custom paper miniatures for your adventuring party, but you can also use it to have your kids, you know, be like, okay, time to create a paper small sort of degendering paper dolls um make a paper small version of like a character in this book and include like all their accoutrement you know like the their spell book and their staff or their stethoscope and microscope depending on what they're reading um so it, it's a it's pretty fun it it lets um or sorry i think it's fun uh and i made it so i'm very unbiased uh it provides a uh, like humanoid outlines for uh um, kids and adults like to just like draw the faces on and like concentrate on like crafting like clothing and armor and wicked hair. I can vouch for this being a really fun uh, family friendly sort of uh, activity to do because uh, Jen actually uh, I think when when you first launched it I guess or or tested it out we we were teaching that D&D summer camp with mm -hmm. the with the girls at Lake Washington middle grade uh middle girls school and um it was it was so much fun thank you uh, another another anthology that I was a part of was uh well we already mentioned it it's it's uncaged um so I have um a wild hunt in that and Jen did the art for it it's uh based on a Korean folk folklore um about the Kumiho uh, nine-tailed fox and um yeah it's you know, being trapped at home with your family, uh, and I don't even know what to say about this. It's a, it's it's a, it's a bit of a horror advent module adventure. Um, so it's, I don't, I can't spoil it. I, I just, I, I, yeah. everyone's a suspect. You know, like who took the last little Debbie from the cardboard box, but then put it back. You know, and maybe weighed it down with something <laughs> like an absolute jerk. I mean, speaking of spoilers, if you want to spoil it, you it is season uh, two, episode 20 of our podcast. So you done spoiled it for yourself if you listen to that. But uh, if your players haven't heard it, uh, and even if they have, like a lot of these adventures go different ways than we actually Absolutely. do on the podcast. So don't let that deter you. Uh, actually, the, this one in particular, I, I revised quite a lot of it because um, – the adventure as written is a lot scarier than uh, it was played on D20 oh, Dames. We got the edited version. We got the editor's version. The, yes. The, the director's cut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Jess, thanks for joining us. Uh, we are just chatting about the awesome adventures you can find on the DMs Guild. Uh, we've talked a little bit about some stuff that's good for new players and new DMs, some stuff that's good for existing campaigns that you can just drop right in, like the, the Fortress adventure. Um, Anything that you particularly want to plug, things you're a part of, things you've played on the DMs Guild? Um, did you already talk about Beyond the Basics? Very, very briefly, but please, yeah, please dive in. I, I mean, I, I don't have dive in levels of information, but definitely that's a, <laughs> <laughs> um, a good one for what you mentioned in terms of like for new DMs because it's got some uh, like level one encounters, but it also has encounters for, um, I think it's all the, the creatures in... Uh, the basic rules so mm -hmm. it has sort of a little bit of everything so definitely encounters it'd be easy to drop in at any point in any level of adventure you can find in beyond the basics uh so fun fact all of the art for the adventures that cat has written for d20 dames and for uncaged uh is actually by our very own jen vaughn um and you did your own art for for uh for your uh yes yes ravnica <laughs> 
uh, adventure as well. Um, what What's that? What's that uh, process like? I flipped through the old portfolio and I send Kat too many images of rejected work. And I was like, any of these work, babe? And uh, <laughs> she says, no, stop it. Be serious. Uh, and uh, I, I said no to those 50 times yeah, exactly. <laughs> like nobody wants a zebra wearing like pants or something um uh no uh, uh, excuse me have you tried I, jess yeah i'm i'm not upset yeah, yeah. with that <laughs> i'm not like to see that Jen, you're going about oh this God. the whole wrong way. You need to send this stuff to Kat before she writes the adventure to inspire <laughs> the adventure, and then oh you're a shoo-in. We should try that sometime, though, if you don't, if you want to. Um, for like a non. Yeah, I mean, it could have been it. It could have been about a zebra, not a cash cow, that one time. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> missed opportunity. Oh, yeah. Missed opportunity. Well, Kat like creates so many evocative like images, and then based on how the dames play it, too. That's that usually. Uh, plays into the um the creation factor so for like um escape from the fortress of memories because it was a raven queen it's like we wanted to like show her influence but without you know spending a lot of time on her so you know that's why it's like her arms reaching uh ever long from the top um but what i what i do is pretty i think pretty common it's like i send a couple comp two to three compositions um so that way um hey cat uh I think I hear your baby calling. Don't listen to this. Um, so that way I send those three to, uh, <laughs> to her and then she picks one and then she's um, invested in it more. Okay, cat, we're good. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we move, you know, from there. Um, so, and I owe her, uh, you know, more because she's clearly written many, many, many more adventures. So um, I think, I think the end of 2020 or summer is going to be, going to be banging. Very cool. All right. Well, um, just to remind people why we are recording this episode, uh, it's for the Play It Forward event, which the DM Guild is having right now, today, uh, now until May 17th, 2020. That means that all earnings uh, go directly to the community creators that uh, create the uh, content on DM Guild, which is uh, huge um, and super gracious of the DM Guild. This is a a crazy crazy time we're in uh so this is this is just a really good time if you've been thinking about getting one of these adventures or trying to play them um this is a an excellent excellent time to uh support uh creators from d20 dames or uh other creators that are on the dm guild oh you can find all of this stuff on d20 dames.com slash marketplace that has all quick links to uh, a lot of the stuff we talked about you can also just search for kat kruger jen vaughn jessica ross on the DMs Guild, and all of their work will show up there. Get some good, get some good content. Run a game, run a game online with your friends. Um, you won't. Work and if it. you do, tell us about it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and tweet at us. Please let us know. Let us know how it went. Or if you want some 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 uh, tips and tricks, uh, <laughs> send a shout out on the uh, on the old Twitter <laughs> bot.